I had Sorry. to learn gratitude. I was given very much when I was a child and I didn't appreciate it. Yeah. I had to get out on my own where I had to, to really work for a living. And I, I, I remember when I was really, really broke and, and I, I went out. I remember once I owned $1,700 on a bill and I went out and made a sale on the day before that bill was due. And uh, I made like $1,900 on the, the sale and I was able to, to uh, pay the bill. But it, it was I, I was walking around with 25 cents in my pocket just uh, lots of times. And then I, I finally got so I did better at the things I was doing. And I was getting along. I was okay. But that taught me gratitude. I started appreciating people that would be nice to me. And I, I even appreciate somebody who smile at me. And I, uh, I do things. I, I walk down the street and I smile at everybody. And they'll smile right back at me. It's, it's contagious. Mr. Walter Broach, I've been trying to get you on for a little while. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Joshua? I am always good. It's the, the best lie I've ever told, but I, um, I believe faking it till I make it sometimes works. Um, <laughs> I, um, well, I, I actually found you online because I was, I was looking and you you'd wrote a book about metaphysics. Um, would you, first, would you mind just going over a little about, about you? I mean, because you spent a lifetime researching this stuff. So just kind of give me a, a reader's digest of you. Well, that sounds exciting to me anyway. It, uh, I think I've been metaphysical all my life. I, I think I brought it with, if you believe in, in reincarnation, I am absolutely positive I was into this in a previous life. I may not have been. You, you can't prove if you've had previous lives or not. Yeah. Because uh, we just, we just weren't, weren't around then. But when uh, starting out, I would say in the youngest years, I used to be psychic. Kids are psychic. Yeah. That's, you know, I would, I would say people, I'm scared of her. And, and my mother would say, oh, you're just, you're just uh, imagining that. And I would, I'd get these ideas and I'd be right. And then she would tell me I'm psychic. And she told me that, uh, well, she took me to a fortune teller when I was eight years old, <laughs> which excited me. And uh, the fortune teller said, told me that I was going to grow up. And well, that's what they all tell you. It's just, just, I don't know if she was, psychic or she wasn't, but she told me nice things. And uh, I've just been really strongly attacked. I, I used to go, I was baptized at eight years old and uh, I didn't really know what it meant. I knew that they sprinkled some water on my head and I was supposed to be a, a really happy, good person. And, but I was baptized as a Catholic and I went to, and I, I like the Catholics, I really do because I, they sang songs and they said things like the Hail Mary and the Our, Our Father, which are like meditations. Well, I learned to meditate when I was an adult and I started meditating. And I, uh, my older brothers were not happy people. And when I was a little kid, they just asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, I wanted to be happy. And they would say, no, you can't go to be happy. You've got to get a job and do something. Well, I got a job and I quit jobs if I wasn't happy doing them. The ones I was happy at, I did well at. And I noticed that as I got older and older and older. And I had several uh, jobs. I got a, after I went through college, after I had not done well in two or three colleges, I uh, finally passed and I got a master's degree in library science. And I got a job in a library. And in fact, I became director of the big library system. I had 15 libraries under me. And for several years, and when I did that, I would take home, I, I get metaphysical books, self-help books, positive thinking books, and I'd read a different book every night. I'd take it home and I got into meditation, but I, uh, I just ate up this stuff. It was just natural to me and I loved it quite. And it, uh, the more I did it, the more I did it, I started writing about it. Now I've written, I've really written four books. I've published two books and I'm going to publish six more. You want to see one of the books? I yeah. just happen to have it right with me. This was the first one. Can you see that? About spiritual yep. energy. And that's just explaining what it is. It, uh, I say spiritual energy is the fundamental energy of the universe. It means what we're 
Every, there's energy throughout the universe. There's all kinds of energies. There's lightning's energy. There's your TV sets made out of energy. Everything's made out of energy. Energy, Einstein in 1905 proved that energy and matter are the same. Matter, skin and bones, energy, everything floating around the air. They're the same. But energy, when it's put together, turns into matter. It turns into atoms. Did you know there's no, no, uh, not, the atoms are not solid. People really don't know that. Uh, who cares about if atoms are solid or not? We're made out of atoms. <laughs> and we're, 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 they're, they're, we're, we're, and they come to, we, it, it, if you go into quantum physics, they will tell you that we are not solid. And we are. Whether you see the little holes in our skin or little pores and stuff, but they're so close together that they appear to be solid. And you can, I can hit myself. I can't go through myself. So something's, something's down there. It's got to be solid, but it's really spiritual. Well, all of that turns into spiritual energy. Are you following me? Am I making sense? Oh, you're making perfect sense. I'm, I'm... And then, okay. Need to make, try to make sense. Do the best we can. And, uh, uh, and what we, our soul is the part of us that's God-like or universal energy-like. It's, 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 and it, 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 it's, it's, one of the first words in the Bible is I remember they were saying in the beginning was the word. Is that how your Bible starts in the yep. beginning was the word, yep. the word, the word is a thought. Yeah. Do you know where thought comes from? Huh? Most people don't. They never, never ask thought. It is energy. Yeah. Thought comes from, well, the only place it can come from that I can figure out and scientists can't figure out where it comes from. Thought comes from your soul, which is spiritual energy. Thought, your soul sends your thought to your brain, which they have recorded thought. Thought, they call them thought warps. That is the time the thought enters your brain. And your brain is like a computer that these thoughts travel through in different places. And they, your, your brain has passageways and it has little rooms in it that your, your thinking goes on. And your brain passes this out to your, your body and it passes your thoughts down to your, your, your vocal cords if you need to speak. Uh, when we first became humans, we didn't have vocal cords. We spoke emotionally. Emotion is our the language of spirit. You might, might as well say people, you don't hear that very often. No. Uh, but, and, and we, we developed as we, 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 when we first came, when we first started hit on earth, we were just little tiny um, frog-like creatures, little snake-like creatures. We turned into fish. We got up so we could walk on land. Then we started looking kind of like monkeys, but we were still hominoids. And we, 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 we were used to hang out of trees. This is evolution. We're constantly evolving. You evolved from the time you were a child to the time you're an adult now. I have evolved for years and years, and I've enjoyed a lot of it most of the time. But I'm changing and I'll continue to change until I pass on. When I pass on my language, my energy, my the, the, the unsolid energy, which is spiritual energy, will go back into where I have worked to put it. It either goes to hell if my thought process thinks there's a hell, or it goes to heaven if I have manifested heaven. Now, when I talk about manifesting where I'm going, our thoughts are creative. We are constantly creating our future. If you have a negative personality, you ain't getting anywhere in life. If you have a positive, happy, forward-looking personality or thought pattern, you're going to do well in life. I, I'm getting old, so I, I'm lucky. I get to see a lot of doctors. Thank goodness the government pays for it. Well, I have to pay them several hundred dollars a month. We keep changing. We keep growing. We keep manifesting. Manifesting. People say they affirm for things, and it doesn't work. I, I affirm that I want to be a millionaire a month from now. That's what the positive thinking things tell you. I, in fact, Emil Kuwe, I think the first 
positive. You know what an affirmation is, I'm sure. Yeah. It's a saying that's very positive. Well, the first one was uh, every day and every way I am getting better and better. Every day and every way I am getting better and better. That was back in the early 18th century. They started doing that. So it's been around a long time. But we're, we continually manifest stuff. And the reason we don't do better subconsciously, we're, we manifest or we affirm or we journal or we visualize that we're going to do well one day. I'm going to be the best football player in the country. Yeah. And then the next day we go to the practice and the coach says, you can't even block your little sister. Or we tell ourselves, oh, Lord, I don't know if I can win this game, if I can help. Oh, and, and our subconscious thoughts, which come from our soul, block the conscious thoughts. So we manifest the positive and we manifest the negative and we block each other and we stay right where we are. It's exciting. I wrote another book. Hey, I'm getting good advertisement in. This one is I wrote about spiritual energy. I wrote about our spiritual energy explained. <laughs> Thank you for the commercial. And I'm gonna write oh, six more. It. I've, I've finished a couple of them. One of them, spiritual energy in you, and they're all, all just different aspects of spiritual energy because it's a, it is a deep program. You can boil it down into we're spiritual, we're made out of energy. Einstein figured out that we're matter and energy are the same. So we just flow together. And that uh, I think he was, they said he was an atheist, but he wasn't. He believed in a, he believed in something. And I don't know what he called it. I haven't studied that. But uh, I study a lot. A lot of a lot of people call them agnostic, which they they believe in something they just don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, people get high, or are, are the people are so they they so disappointed in their lives. They have they want to get high. Okay, how do you get high? You do drugs, or in my age, we just did uh, booze. Yeah. Uh, I had a, I had an older brother. He did a little pot, but I don't think he did it like they do now. And he was he was a good drunk. Uh, I used to tip a little bit. Everybody does that when you're growing up. I don't. I don't know. You may not have. Uh, oh, I went but, through my from from about 17 to 21. I don't really have a lot of recollection. Yeah, that's 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 about the good age. And uh, yeah. but they they they, they, t they do this stuff to to get out of their mundane world and to get high and to to be whatever they can. Well, I stay high all the time. I mean, do I do I look like I'm down or unhappy or no. And it is because I've been meditating, meditating for years, probably four years. I was talking to somebody about this today, that uh, my normal state is that I walk around very happy, uh, joyful, calm and relaxed and look at things for fun, making life fun. And I think, in fact, I know that people can think better when they are relaxed and calm. Yep. And I made a lot of mistakes when I was irritable, irritable and mad, get mad at my brothers and fight with them. Stupid. <laughs> and that, that's really, I, I can't understand that to this age. Brothers and sisters don't get along quite often. And they grow up and they separate. They go their separate way, but they're, you know, uh, pleasant to each other on the surface. and They really don't like each other. Uh, both of my brothers are dead. They, uh, so I don't have to worry about liking them or not. Do you have brothers and sisters? Uh, yes, I um, I have several, but I grew up with a, just one I have one brother and one sister. I don't I haven't talked to them in years. You don't talk to them, hey? uh, Yeah, I haven't talked to them and in, in have no desire to. Yeah, yeah. People just and uh, I was surprised when I found out that I wasn't the only one like that. Yeah. I think I was thirty five or forty before I understood that. Yeah. But. And I get back to what I was talking about. If you relax, you get high. I stay in a perpetual state of highness. And this is what they're looking for on this booze and drugs and what they got some new one uh, that's killing a lot of people. But they're, they're trying to get out of them. They're, they're, that's what they're searching for. Yeah. And they aren't finding it because they're going, oh, and people will say they got into spirituality because of the drugs. No. I, I've heard people say that before. Yeah. They were trying to get out of themselves 
and they tried the drugs, but the drugs weren't lasting. They weren't doing the jobs. And so they happened to stumble into meditation or something, something similar to it. And they uh, got that way. They got into meditation, but they had to go through the suffering of the drugs, which they don't, they say that wasn't suffering. Yeah, it was, or the coming down was suffering. But the, the idea, and I'll improve on it. I have got leather six months to live. Maybe another, I think I'm going to shoot for five years because I have too much work to do. So I may make it till 90. Yeah, you, you told uh, me uh, the other day that you think you, you have three more years. And I, and I told my wife, I was like, he's got at least five years. I mean. Let's go know, for five you, years. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I, I think you can, I think you can do, do better. But uh, I mean, you're a, you're a lot more spry than a lot of people that are a lot younger than you. Um, I, uh, I grew up, my, my, my mother died at like 51 and my, my grandpa and granny died at like 52 or 53. So, you know, I, uh, <laughs> but you know, they smoke, drink, stuff like that. You know, I, um, you don't take care of yourself. One of the things you were saying that, that, um, well, I, I learned a long time ago that if I'm going to explain spirituality to a Christian, I need to, I have to use the Bible. Um, if I explain something to a Muslim, you use the, you know, the Quran and Jew, you use the Torah, stuff like that. But uh, the Bible, Jesus actually did talk about um, manifesting stuff like that. You know, you speak life into everything and stuff, and you talk about how to how to receive. And the thing that's not in the Bible, but if you go into the original text, um, like uh, some of the Gnostic texts and stuff, like Book of Timothy, um, it actually explains it's not just speaking, you know, positive and and knowing something's going to happen emotion was the key that you've got to feel that it's already and that's the thing most people miss is that they're not they, they'll keep affirming everything but they don't um they they don't believe it and they don't feel it they don't feel as if it's already happened and when they talk they're like um I, i'm going to get money well getting is always future tense and sure. you know the the universe doesn't look at it like 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 we think it does or well it, it just It'll say, well, yeah, you're going to get later. So you're not having it today. You know, or you'll say, yeah, you know, or you'll say, I don't want to be sick. Well, it's not going to hear don't want. It's going to say here sick. So you're going to be sick. So your mind, you're, even if, if you want to talk in science, because science is what helped me, like Dr. Joe Dispenza helped me a lot on understanding spirituality. Um, but uh, you can even use subconscious. Your your subconscious, if you if you're, don't want to go in a spiritual world, because me personally, I think spirituality and science are the same thing. Um, they are. They're coming and, closer together. Yeah. Once people start understanding it, and the thing is, is when you don't understand something, you'll call it magic or you'll call it religion or spirituality. Um, but once you start understanding it, you'll realize that that everything is reality. It's it's uh, which our reality is our conscious conscience consciousness. Yeah. You know that that is um, is everything. And and I, I agree, consciousness and spirit and energy, it's all the same thing because we are nothing but. Uh, light and vibration energy, you know, um, and, and that's been proven, you know, so when, you know, I've, I've explained it to somebody cause I was talking to, I was at church the other day and, um, and I said, you know, people don't understand they're, they're, they're so religious that they, they don't even know what they're reading. They're what's being explained to them. I'm like in Genesis, it says we were made in the, in the image of God, right? Well, light and vibration, that's God. We're made literally like God. God is in us and you know, we're in God and, you know, Jesus said heaven is inside you. And that's what he was referring to. But he also said that, you know, when somebody asked what's the most important commandment, he said, love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your might. And just the like, love your neighbor as yourself. That's because we're all made of each other. We're all the same. We're all made of God, of source, you know, and Christians and a lot of religious don't like people saying source because they get stuck on names. Well, God's name isn't God. You know, God, God is a title and I don't think it's big enough. You've been doing your homework. Yeah. I have been studying this about. for a while. I, um, you know, I, I got, I don't, I don't like being told what to do. And people, I learned a lot of Christians tell me what I'm supposed to think and what I'm supposed to believe. And that was the reason why I got away from Christianity for years. And I didn't become a Christian again until 2017. And I still believe differently than others now. Um, but I, I don't go into detail because I don't, one, I don't think it's anybody's business Two, I don't get some of the most hateful people I've ever met were Christians. If you tell them that you don't believe in the same Christianity as them. If you disagree with them or something, so I don't get into that argument. I'm like, believe what you want to believe. That's fine, but yeah. you know, but Jesus was very very adamant about how we're we're all the same. In fact, he said, "You'll do greater things than me." You know, that, yeah. that's you know, it's because we all have the ability to 
manifest healing in, in each other and ourselves and manifest, you know, futures, you know, we can, we can create because even God, it, it, even in the Bible, it says that, that one, it says we are little gods. Um, it's an, in Psalms 82, six, I think I can't remember, but, um, but it says we're all little gods um, and people don't like that because they, they think that they, they're always thinking so high on deity that they're like, Oh, I'm way down here. I don't want to, I'm like, well, we're part of God. You know, you don't have to think you're equal to God or anything like that, but we are still part of God. It says we speak life and death through the mouth. You know, we, we, we create things and it's through our energies and everything has energy. So if you're speaking negative, you're going to be having a negative experience. You're going to create negativity, uh, whether it's for you or for somebody else. And that's why you, when you learn that being happy, like you are, you, you, that's the secret. It, it's, it's be happy, you know, no matter, be grateful for no matter what, because in, 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 in Christianity, it talks about that a lot. It's like, be grateful, you know, be happy, uh, be, thank God for every experience you have. I had Sorry. to learn gratitude. I was given very much when I was a child and I didn't appreciate it. Yeah. I had to get out on my own where I had to, to really work for a living. And I, I, I remember when I was really, really broke and, and I, I went out. And I remember once I owned $1,700 on a bill and I went out and made a sale on the day before that bill was due. And uh, I made like $1,900 on the, the sale and I was able to, to uh, pay the bill. But it, it was I, I was walking around with 25 cents in my pocket just uh, lots of times. And then I, I finally got so I did better at the things I was doing. And I was getting along. I was okay. But that taught me gratitude. I started appreciating people that would be nice to me. And I, I even appreciate somebody to smile at me. And I, uh, I do things. I, I walk down the street and I smile at everybody. And they'll smile right back at me. It's, it's contagious. Yeah. Our good moods are contagious. I had my older brother, he used to, he used to start yelling. And he'd get mad, and I would think he would be yelling at me, so I would start yelling back at him. And now if people start yelling, I don't yell back at them anymore. I know they're yelling at themselves probably, or they they're just have this penchant for being mad. I don't, I don't have to know why they're mad. I can just sit back here and listen to them, and, 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 you know, play the tune in my head. It, I'm getting off the subject, but it, uh, you're doing the right thing, and... You're, you're, you know, you, 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 you're, you're unique. You, you know the Bible. I went to a, a, a Baptist college, Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. Loved it. Really a good, good Grand Canyon University now. When I went there, it was Grand Canyon College. And they were very strict Baptists. And I had to take a couple of Bible classes. And I forgot most everything. It's been so long, so long ago. But, um, and they were very, very nice people. And it, uh, I, I, so I, I don't know the Bible like I should. You know the Bible, and you should be well prepared to talk to Bible people uh, because they'll beat you over the head with it, and you've been beaten over the head with it, I'm sure. Yep. And and you'll you'll get better and better, and you will be able to talk to them. And it might be because of my age, but I just I'm just right up front that I'm spiritual. I'm not a Christian, and even the Christians I talk to say say, oh, they understand. Yeah. And if they do or not, they're either lying to me or they accept it. But I've had really long conversations with them. It might be because I'm so old. <laughs> Who knows? It's possible. <laughs> yes, sir. I am. Um, I've. Uh, I, I tend to get into conversations a lot with random people. We went to a. Um, we went on a hike in Ar or is close to Arkansas uh, a couple of days ago, and we were down at this this waterfall. And there's an older couple there that actually happened to be from Owasso. Um, and um, we started talking, and I started talking about Christianity and everything with them. And it's amazing how people are more spiritual than they are biblical, um, th more often than you would think. A lot of Christians um, – I've met Christians that believe in reincarnation um, and – and then I've met some that said, you're, if you talk that, that's devil talk and stuff. I mean, it's, but I've explained like Jews still talk about reincarnation. It's, it's, I've talked to several Jews. I've listened to rabbis on YouTube um, explaining reincarnation. 
Um, and when I had asked them about it, they're like, yeah, we, we believe in it, but we don't focus on it because we lose the point of this life if we start focusing on past lives. And, you know, and, but Christians are like, oh, no, that, that, that's against it. Well, Emperor Constantine, you know, in the, um, uh, in 300s, uh, said, put an end to it. He, he was not. Yeah, they outlawed it. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. 20, 20% of the Christians, I, this is what I read recently, 20% of Christians believe in reincarnation, but they don't talk yeah. about it. And no, it's, you'll it's, get ridiculed. It's, it's creeping back into the Christian religion now. Well, it, it's actually in the Bible. Um, they, they couldn't, uh, there was a lot more of it, like in other, other letters and stuff that they took out of the Bible, but it's still in there because uh, there's this one part where Jesus says, uh, he's talking to Peter and the disciples. He said, who do they say I am? And they said, well, they say that you're um, Elijah or, or the, and it, and it, they runs off all these names of real people. Well, Elijah died. Um, Eliza or Elijah, I get confused between the two. But, um, you know, that was two 2,000 years before this, you know, or, or longer. Yeah. And, and so they were re talking reincarnation. But Jesus, if it was – if that's not what they believed, Jesus being a teacher um, would have scolded him and corrected him. But he didn't. You know, he said, no, that's not who I am. Um, yeah. and, and, you know – and that was evidence of it. And there's this other part where there, um, Jesus was talking to a, um, I believe it was the Pharisees, uh, and he said, what did that old man over there that was blind, what did he do or did his parents do that made him blind? One, that's talking about karma. Um, two, um, the guy was born blind, so he couldn't have done anything in this life. It would have been a previous life. Yeah. You know, but, but people – a lot of things are subjective and they don't want to believe that that's what it could be talking about. Nobody can explain to me what they're talking about. They're like, Oh no, no, that's, that's taken out of context. I hear that a lot. I'm like, okay, well tell me the context then. Why would he not correct him? Why would he, you know, uh, yeah. and, and the, the fact is, is that they don't have an answer and most people have to feel like they have an answer. And that's oh, yeah. where, where arguments and bitterness comes from is because your answer isn't the same as my answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even twins, identical twins, they think differently sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. just it, it just it's and it's it's learning to accept the other person's thought that you'll learn from it. You might learn. Some people don't bother to learn. They just go. What is it? John Doe. He he uh, graduated, went to work at eighteen, died at twenty one, was buried at seventy two, but he, yeah. he he existed from twenty one to seventy two. Just existed a lot of people are like that but not spiritual people yeah, i don't a lot, think. Of, a lot of people don't um they they hide from uh conversations of substance like religion and stuff um because because it's a difficult because they're always either they can't handle somebody's different opinions or they're afraid that somebody's going to judge them and and that's it's sad it's that you can't you can't have freedom of thought when it comes to spirituality in, in several religions. I know Christianity is one of them. Uh, Muslims, another one that you can't, you can't believe differently. Um, otherwise you get ridiculed. And I'm like, I'm not allowed to break apart things and say things. I'm like, I'm like, I'm supposed to believe hundred percent in a book. And I used to have a really bad problem with the Bible. Um, I I've learned different. I, I've always said that God uses the broken to heal the broken and then it occurred to me one day, I'm like, you know, even if the Bible, because at this time I didn't believe anything the Bible said, I didn't disbelieve either. I just didn't put my faith in it. And, and, you know, I, and I said, you know, even if the Bible was 100% fake, if you're listening to God and reading this, then you can take anything out of it and do something good with it. And so, uh, and so that's why my mind started changing and stuff. But, oh gosh, I just went on a tangent and forgot what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, dementia, it happens a lot. Um, but you know, people, people tell me that I have to believe what King James ordained everybody to believe and what Emperor Constantine ordained everybody else to believe and whatever was taken out of the Bible that that was taken out for a good reason. I'm like, well, the, the book of Timothy was in the Bible, um, forever up until a couple of hundred years ago. You know, why did they just suddenly take it out? Why don't they have the book of Mary, um, which they did, they found. Why don't they have that in the Bible? You know, there's there's so many questions I had, and then I um, uh, I started researching. Well, what's the oldest? Uh, they say Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament, and and so I started researching, and I found that Paul died in 61 A.D. 
but the oldest scripts they have that's on the New Testament were written like 150 to 250 AD. I'm like, how's that possible? You know, and then it was in, it's in fragments. But see, most Christians don't know this. They don't research it. And I'm not saying it's false. I'm not saying that what they what the, I'm not saying any of the Bible is false, but I still have questions. I still I still want to talk about it, but people won't talk about it because they don't want you to question anything. And yeah. that to me is sad, you know, that you, uh, you I, had, I had this good, I used to, she's dead now. She's, uh, but I used, I lived in Mississippi for a while. It was fun. And uh, I had this friend, her, I called her Mrs. Turner because she was older than me. And uh, we were talking about something once and she said, you know, people are gonna believe whatever they want to believe. And that's what it is. People believe what they want to believe. Yeah, I can believe that three and seven are 42 if I want, or I can believe three and seven are 10. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's just I, I have, I, I have friends that are um, strong flat earthers. I mean, they completely, I won't argue with them because honestly, you're talking, it, it's a religious, it, it's a religion. In fact, most of them, people that believe it do it because of religion, uh, because in the, the Jews believed a long, long time ago that, that there was a firmament that they had a picture of everything and so it was ordained by god this is the way the earth is you know and and i've talked to some people i've talked to some pretty famous people that are flat earthers and you just and i'm like well i i question again i don't tell people they're wrong just like a religion your spirituality i'm not going to say you're wrong uh, you yeah. know i have my beliefs and you know but i can that's i can have quality. my beliefs without telling you that you're wrong that's a good quality it, so it, let people be wrong. It, it, it was a learned quality because I, I didn't like arguing. People assumed that I like to argue because I was very opinionated. I'm like, I don't like to argue. I like to discuss. I like to have conversations. You know, and I asked like flat earthers, I'm like, well, how come when you look at the, the moon and you look at Venus and you look at other stars and planets and suns, they're all round. And the only thing I've had people say that, well, it's a hologram. Um, I've had people tell me that, is it really? And that's that's all they had. They, they you know, it was nothing. But you had, I was like, you have to convince so many millions and millions of people, you know, physicists, astrophysicists, and you know, this astronauts and stuff to fall into this belief system and, and this conspiracy for it to really be flat. You'd have to convince pilots, you know, that, that the earth is actually, you got to tell everybody the earth is flat or the round. It, it, it confused me. But again, like you said, people believe what they want to believe. So who's it to me? What's it going to prove or help or hurt? If I decide to argue with somebody and try to get them to believe the earth is round. Yeah, they just walk off in a hustle and they just don't win anything. It'll just ruin a relationship. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so why, why do it? Why, you know, why convince you to believe in my God? Um, why, why convince you to believe in a God? I mean, I, uh, the only thing I've ever done when it comes to that, I had an atheist friend. Um, uh, we, we completely disagree about just about everything, but I've learned not to, not to talk about things that we it's going to start an argument honestly it's not going to do any good but uh people kept on saying that well i'm going to get him to become a christian i'm going to get him you know but i knew he was an atheist and but what bothered me was that he i didn't want him to think the wrong thing about jesus uh, whether he believes he was god whether not, that didn't that didn't matter to me it's not my place but i went in there one day into his office and i started talking i was like you know if atheists would meet jesus the way jesus introduced him and not the way christians introduced jesus I don't see how anybody wouldn't love who Jesus is. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, because I'm like, whether you believe that he's God, whether you believe anything biblically or Christian, you know, believe in the Christian way, nothing. But why judge the man? Because I used to judge Jesus based on Christians, and it kept me away from Christianity. Um, and but so I've learned Christi Christians have nothing to do with Jesus. That I, my my opinion of Jesus has nothing to do with Christians. Um, it, but he came up to me three months later and said, Man, you're right. I started researching Jesus, and I love the dude. And, and he started following a guy on TikTok that would explain um, things written in the Bible and explain the meaning in Greek and all that other stuff. I'm like, this guy's actually researching this stuff. Who would have never done it? But everybody tried to introduce him to Jesus the way they knew Jesus. I'm like, well, th you can't do that. Jesus didn't come up to people and say, hey, you know, um, you, I'm, I'm God, and I'm going to die and be resurrected, and you need to worship me. That's not what he did. He didn't even talk about himself like that. He just, you know, he came and healed people. I tell people, I'm like, you want to know what kind of Christian I am? I was like, you know, when Jesus would walk up to a lame person and and that was that was injured, and he would he didn't ask them what their belief system was. He didn't he didn't ask them to listen to him preach. He didn't ask them to do anything. He just healed them. 
that's the type of Christian I am. That's I'm a good trying to help people. That's it. I'm trying to love people the way I'm supposed feel like I'm supposed to. I think that's wonderful. I'm proud of you. Well, I appreciate it. I, um, uh, not everybody agrees with me. Um, I've said, I actually made a short video that said that and literally had, I had a Christian text uh, message comment on it and say, um, you're, uh, you're just, you're just, uh, um, you believe in the hippie Jesus and you're going to, he literally said, I'm going to get God. Jesus is God. Christians killed one day. I will literally have a gun to their head. I'm like, what? How did you get that? And one said that I'm a, I'm a Christian of works. And I'm like, they're, they're just reaching, figuring out a way to hate me. I'm like, that's not Christian at all, to hate somebody because they believe differently than you. I'm like, I, Jesus did say the most important commandment is to love. So therefore, if that's the most important commandment, that means no matter what you read in the Bible, no matter what anybody says or does, if it doesn't go through the filter of love, then you're doing it wrong. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So that that's Christian. And yet most Christians that I've talked to about this, they don't understand that. They'll tell you, well, being gay is, is a sin. Doing this is a sin. I'm like, okay, well, according to, to your beliefs and according to the Bible, yes, that may be a sin. But where does it say that your job is to tell them they're going to hell? Nothing in the Bible actually says you're going to hell because you're gay. Nothing. Yet most people that I, 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 I shouldn't say most. I shouldn't overgeneralize that. A lot of people actually believe that's true a lot of people that aren't christians um like a lot of gay people that i've talked to were scared of christianity and didn't want to have anything to do with it because they believe that christians think they're going to hell because they're gay well the bible never says that at all do they mention gayness i don't think they're um they uh i actually talked to um i had an interview with an aramaic christian minister and she said that there are over eighty four thousand mistranslations in the bible um because people didn't understand the idioms of of the near east of the jesus's area i mean you gotta understand the bible was written by italians who never went to the near east didn't know that culture and it was written by the english who never went yeah. to the near east didn't know that culture um and the translations and stuff so they're very possible that there's a lot of mistranslations well that was one of them she said was that he they weren't talking about homosexuality like that they were talking about at that time men had to protect their wives because some other guy would just say, Hey, I want your wife. And he'd just come and take her, you know, yeah. and that's why they started, you know, covering up and stuff. But they'd also, that was during the time, um, that, um, Roman gladiators would have a male servant, a little, uh, a boy that would, uh, that his job was to take care of him, but he was also, um, like a concubine type thing also that he would use him for sexual services. And it was saying that is wrong. You can't do that. But they weren't, he wasn't, the Bible wasn't actually talking about homosexual relationships. That's and I don't argue either way because it's not my place. I'm not gay. I don't care. Um, yeah. But it's still uh, what I tell people is like I was telling the guy that like my purpose of this podcast is it's not necessarily to get you to agree or believe differently. What it's to get you is to see from a different perspective. And so when you do that, it opens your eyes and your heart to empathy. And when you're able to empathize with somebody to understand why they would believe certain things then you have you open the door to being able to do exactly what you're supposed to be doing loving somebody because it's hard to love somebody if you don't empathize with them you're right and you how, know, how often do you do these podcasts um i try to do it once a week but i um it's it's slowed down quite a bit because i took a took a break but if i can get guests enough guests and stuff I, i'll do it as much as i can i mean i'll do it every day if i can oh that's fantastic um, i yeah, saw so one not the other day i found one Okay. It, uh, I, I hit, I don't know, I, I hit S-O-G-T-V. Yep. That's who you are. Yep. That's who you is. <laughs> yep, that's who I is. There's there's a couple of pages I've seen that they have that, but they don't have, they're um, a lot, I mean, I'm not big, but they're a lot smaller than I am. And it's not, it's obviously not me because I have a picture of my ugly mug on there. And I mean, so, it. Uh, but I have, you know, quite a bit of videos. I mean, it's that's good. The more you do, the better it is. Yeah, I mean it's 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 harder than I expected because I'm not I I'm not very good at being popular. Um, I don't know how to present something where somebody will get interested to hear something. Uh, when people hear me talk or hear my conversations, people seem to like them and enjoy the conversation. But it's but if they never have the opportunity to hear it, then they never know. You know, yeah. I, I I still have friends on Facebook that don't even know I have a podcast. You know, even though I talked about it all the time. But it's because I get throttled a lot on social media because I'm over opinionated and 
uh, that the YouTube I've, and Facebook doesn't like that. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen some of your people talking to you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I, that, um, I, I, I've been known to start some arguments at times, um, not intentionally, but I mean, I, I call it fishing. I'll say something that um, that I know that it will antagonize certain people um, because even though it shouldn't, like I said that um, um, it's I, I one day I said, you know, it's it's OK to uh, be friends with somebody of a different uh, religious perspective. And if you're a Christian, Jesus was known for that. And I actually ticked off a few few people. They uh, messaged me and said that Jesus was not friends with with sinners and stuff. I was like, so you're saying Jesus was manipulating people so that they would become followers? I was like, that doesn't sound like Jesus, you know. But you know, it's just they they want to believe so bad that we're supposed to be separate from everybody. You know, it's just I'm like, you can you don't have to believe in the same thing to be friends with people. You know, in you're fact, right. a lot of times it's that difference that allows you both to grow because you're able to see a different perspective and understand different ways of looking at things. Well, there was a story where he went into to the Pharisees and to overthrew the tables and the chairs and everything and called them a bunch of hypocrites or something. Yeah. I, I remember that. And he used to hang out with the, the uh, not too happy people or the, the so-called sinners and all that kind of stuff yep. and tell them to be happy and thank love. Yeah. I mean, come on. He, he, um, Matthew was a tax collector, which at that time it was, um, they were hated worse than our IRS now, which is hard to believe, but, um, but, you know, but he, he got Matthew to follow him. You know, it's just yeah. people that, you know, were fishermen were not considered the upstanding. They were basically like sailors now and stuff, you know, where they, you know, cuss and, you know, well, they, their cussing back then was not like ours or anything, but you know, their, their, their language was a little more foul. They weren't, they weren't as, you know, even though at that time, Everybody was religious. I mean, if you weren't religious, you were uh, you you got punished for not being religious, for not doing what you're supposed to do. That's what the Pharisees did. You know, you had two sets of rules. You had the Pharisees and you had the Romans that you had to listen to both of them. Spirituality is one of them things that I think everybody should investigate and look into whether they want to stick with it or not. That's fine. But at least have a basic understanding and realize that 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 we aren't just a religion. I've said it before. uh religion well it's like on tiktok i don't know if you know much about tiktok or anything but uh, people will make these videos and these atheists will make these videos and they'll do these live streams and they'll ask people or they'll say god is not real prove to me that he is you know and he and they use the bible to prove that god's not real and and i've said this before i was like what religion was never intended to prove the to validate whether God's real or not. The Bible was not created to say God is real or God is not real. No. Um, because at that time, everybody believed in God. Even pagans believed in God. They didn't believe in an afterlife, so to speak, but they believed in God or gods. You know, um, everybody did. The, the Bible was there to, to uh, basically control you. Um, and not necessarily, and I don't think religion is necessarily trying to control you in a bad way, but it is still a control. It's you know, control. It, it, People need structure, and there are there are people that if they don't have that, like you remember who um, uh, uh, Cooper, uh, Alice Cooper is the singer for the yeah. '80s, '90s, um, big hair singer. Um, he um, he is actually a pretty strong, devout Christian. Uh, before though, he grew up that way, and then he um, he became Alice Cooper. That's not his real name, but he became that 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 character, and he got into drugs really bad and stuff. Well. It got so bad that he would leave. He, he would go on a bender for days away from his wife. Well, his wife one day said, uh, unless you quit this and come start going to church with me, uh, we're done. And so to save his marriage, he quit drugs and started going back to church. Well, he had to go to a fire and brimstone type of church because he said that's the type – that's who he was. He would not pay attention. He would not stay in it unless he was scared. You know, He needed that fear. Um, well, he was talking to his – pastor one day and said he was thinking about quitting alice cooper because it, it it's the wrong symbol of christianity that's not christianity and what his pastor said was who is better to lead the philistines to christ than the king of the philistines and so he stayed alice cooper yeah. um but it was all perspective it was what do certain people need to do it some people need that structure to stay good Otherwise, he got got into drugs and alcohol and, you know, benders and, you know, uh, you know, some deviant activities, but he needed religion. 
some people like me, I don't need somebody. I don't need a pastor telling me what to do. I don't need a book. I don't need anything to lead me to God. You know, studying a science has helped me more than anything lead, lead me closer to God. Spirituality, because I realized that because it, it never made sense to me that that they were separate. I'm like, if spirituality is real, then it should be scientific uh, because science is real. Sci well, science is the study of reality. You know, um, so I, you should be able to prove in spirituality. Well, quantum physics has, uh, you know, uh, there's this one, the observation principle. Have you heard that before? No. Um, they what they proved was they they had this this uh, slit. Uh, it was the uh, this uh, another thing is called the slit experiment. Um, they they shot this slit um, and shot particles through the slit. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and it hit the wall. And when you when you observe it, it turned into waves. But when you're not looking, it stays particles. That's yes. not possible. And yeah. then they also found that if you if you shoot it our particles. And you don't turn the camera on until last second, it would, it's like it changed history, like the past, like it changed it, which shouldn't make sense unless you understand time is relative. Time is, there is no past and there's no future. There's only right now. I read all about that about six months ago. I thought it was interesting. It's very interesting, but it proves to me, like, uh, do you know who Dr. Joe Dispenza is? Dr. Joseph? Joe, Dis Joe Dispenza. Hmm. I highly suggest you you read up on him because he taught me. I used to doubt prayer and I doubted healing and stuff like that. It just it just seemed woo woo. And then he actually scientifically he doesn't use religion. Um, he's spiritual, but he doesn't use that. He uses science because he he's a he was a, a chiropractor, but he um, he studied the um, uh, the heart brain um, connection. And he's proven that you can heal yourself and has actually done that. He healed himself from an injury in 1987. He was, had, was fractured from the top of his uh, spine to the bottom of his spine. He was supposed to have – He they said the only way he would be able to walk again is if he had surgery. Well, he's, he chose not to. Um, and four of his doctor friends called him an idiot. They were mad at him and stuff uh, because he's a doctor. He should know better. Well, he decided – he said if – I can't sit there and say that you can heal yourself, but not have faith enough to heal myself. And so he decided he was in the hospital. He said for the first uh, 10 weeks, he said six or 10 weeks, um, he said uh, he, he was having trouble getting his brain to, to, to stay focused because he kept on defeating himself because he's like, I got to sell this and that because when you start selling, talking about selling things, you're already saying that you're not going to heal. And but he said well, after he got to that point where he no longer did that and he was focused meditating on pure healing. Six weeks later, he walks out of the hospital, walks yeah. out of the hospital, yes. no surgery, yes. nothing. Um, I, and he's I, proven that he, he does these conferences and he'll have 2,000 people there. And he still hooks up like 500 of them up to machines and stuff and study. So everything he's constantly still studying and using science because it's not called a scientific thing if you can't reproduce it. And so yeah. he's reproduced it. He's had people heal of terminal cancer. He's had patients, people that have been in a wheelchair their whole life, walk out of their wheelchair. Yeah. You know? It, it, it's just fascinating, but I, um, I'll email you his name and stuff. And so you can look him up and stuff. I'll look him up. He, yes. He's definitely worth, worth the research. I, there's a ton of videos on YouTube with him, but anyway, I, I certainly appreciate it. I, well, um, I, 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 we need to have you on again, you know, maybe something more specific, uh, talking, explaining meditation itself and, you know, and discussing that because that's what I'm trying to learn how to do now. Um, it, I should have done it years ago, but I, my problem is staying focused when I having back issues, it's hard for me to sit down and meditate uh, because it hurts my back. Um, you know, but, I meditate. yeah, see, I didn't know you could do that until I heard somebody say there's laying down and there's even walking meditations. Um, I used to, I used to do a running meditation. Oh, wow. If, if you see me running, you should probably be running too. Cause I don't run. That, uh, <laughs> I don't, that's why I carry a gun. So I don't have to run from anything. Okay. Um, Thank you for sticking around till the end. Hopefully, I left you either enlightened, lightened, or moved by the experience. If you enjoyed what you saw, could you hit that like and subscribe button right there? And if you didn't, could you still hit that like and subscribe button right there so somebody else has the opportunity to not like what they saw? Thank you. Uh -huh.